section 2.4 is linear inequalities, we're going to graph and write the answer in interval notation. Now this is set builder notation, so it means all the values of x such that x is less than negative 3. So it's a different type of mathematical notation, but we're going to be graphing x is less than negative 3. Now we're going to use a parenthesis because this is a less than, and if we remember, we're going to recall that a greater than, a less than, a negative infinity, and a positive infinity are all represented with a parenthesis. Okay, and then a greater than or equal to, and a less than or equal to are all represented with a bracket. Okay, so because this one is a less than, we're going to use a parenthesis at negative 3. Okay, and then less than that. If the variable is on the left, you can shade the way the arrow points. And since the arrow is pointing to the left, we can shade to the left. All right. Now that's the graph, but interval notation wants us to describe just the shaded region. As we read left to right, the very first thing we come to is an arrow pointed to the left. An arrow to the left is negative infinity, and then it stops at negative 3 with the parenthesis. So that's our interval notation. Number two says x is greater than or equal to 0.3. All the values of x such that x is greater than or equal to 0.3. So we're going to start at 0 0.3. We're just going to estimate. So it's about here somewhere, and it's going to be a bracket. It's a bracket because of that equal to symbol. And it's greater than that, so arrow points to the right. We're going to shade this to the right. Okay, now we want to describe the shaded region. As you read left to right, the very first thing you come to is a bracket at 0 0.3. And the last thing you come to is an arrow on the right, which is a positive infinity. So that's going to be interval notation. All right, number three, the first thing we're going to have to do is solve for x. So to get x by itself, we want to add 7 to both sides. x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Now we're going to graph that. It's a bracket at negative 2. And since it's bracket because of the bar right there, and then it's shaded to the right because it's greater than. Interval notation. As I read this left to right, the very first shaded thing I come to is a negative 2, a bracket negative 2, and the last thing is an arrow to the right. So that's going to be our interval notation. Number 4, first of all, we want to solve this, so we want to get all the variables on one side. So I'm going to move 7x to the other side by subtracting, and that's going to give me x minus 7. That goes away. To get x by itself, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. x is less than or equal to 2. Okay, that's going to be a bracket on the 2. And since it's less than, shading to the left, to everything less than uh, positive 2. Okay, so as I read the shaded region left to right, the very first thing I come to is an arrow to the left, which is negative infinity, all the way to a positive 2 with a bracket. So this is going to be our interval notation. We're going to continue on the next page on number 5. If there's a fraction in the problem, we can get rid of the fraction by multiplying, putting this over 1 and then multiplying by a common denominator. A common denominator is going to be 4. So if I multiply this by 4 and this by 4, now I want to simplify. On the left, divide by 4, divide by 4, and you're left with a 3x. On the right-hand side, um, 1 and 4 do not simplify, so I say 4 times 6 is 24. And then I just solve, divide both sides by 3, and x is greater than or equal to 8. Okay, so that means a bracket on the 8. 
and it's greater than so that's to the right now interval notation as I read left to right the first thing I come to is a bracket at the 8 and the last thing that I come to is an arrow to the right which is a positive infinity number 6 you want to solve for x so divide both sides by 5 okay and then so x is less than negative 4.7 okay find negative 4.7 and just approximate it's somewhere in this area negative 4.7 and it's less than that and it's only a parenthesis because it's less than it doesn't have the equal to bar all right, now I need to describe that in interval notation. The very first thing I come to is an arrow to the left, which is negative infinity. And the last thing is that negative 4.7 with the parenthesis. All right, number 7. If they multiply by negative 3, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3 so that I can get x by itself. If you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you have to flip the symbol and that's this rule right here so that's something we need to remember so then x is less than or equal to and then 9 divided by negative 3 is a negative 3 so that's going to be a bracket on negative 3 and it's less than so I'm going to be shading to the left and now I want to describe that using interval notation. So the first thing I come to is a negative infinity. And then it stops at negative 3 with a bracket. Okay, we can continue with number 8. And we're going to solve. So to get x by itself, subtract 7 from both sides. Divide both sides by negative 2. Whenever you divide both sides by a negative, we have to flip our symbol, our inequality symbol. So we're going to get x is less than or equal to a negative 1. Now I want to write that in interval notation. They didn't tell me I had to graph it, but people who struggle writing interval notation seem to do much better if they sketch a quick little graph. So I like to sketch a quick, quick graph, even though it's not required of me. It's less than or equal to, so it's a bracket. Now, interval notation is easy for me to write after I see the picture of it, so it's going to be negative infinity to negative 1 with the bracket. So this is the solution that they're looking for. They just want just interval notation. All right, number 9, we're going to distribute 3x minus 15, 4x minus 2, Move all the variables to one side and all the numbers to the other. So it gives me negative x minus 15 is less than negative 2. Get x by itself. Then if you divide both sides by negative 1, once again, when we divide both sides by negative, we're going to flip our inequality. So we have x is greater than negative 3. If I wanted to draw a quick sketch of it so that my interval notation is easier for me, it's a parenthesis and it's greater than. So I'm going to have a negative 3 to a positive infinity. Oops, and I made a mistake. This is not a 3. This should be a 13. So we're going to change that on all of those. I almost missed that. A negative 2 plus 15 is going to be a positive 13 right there. So go back and make that change. And um, then the rest of it still applies. All the rest of it's the same. So let's change all of our 3s to 13s. And now everything should be correct. Negative 13 to infinity.